What if I told you that for decades, the United States military has been keeping hidden a very secret, clandestine group of soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and guardsmen. They are desperate for the civilian authorities and the people of the United States at large to not find out that they ever existed. A great many of them are veterans, and they have remained silent until now. There's an article out now on Army Times where they start to reveal themselves. And when you find out what's happened to these people, these heroes that served, it is going to blow your mind. And the fact that I'm reporting on it, this channel is, is probably going to surprise a lot of people as well. It's a battlefield of the mind thing. It's something that not a lot of people have considered. The U.S. military has taken it on the chin, so to speak, quite badly the last, oh, 15 to 20 years with all of these constant wars. And this channel has taken them to task for a lot of the decisions they've made. But some of those decisions go back a very long time. Now, yesterday, brand new video posted over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, once again, covering this topic, this battlefield of the mind, psychological operations, things that you can discern and see when you start to blow away the clouds of emotion and look at the information critically, you'll start to see something. And this particular story is probably going to surprise a lot of people. Now, if you'd like to join us real quick, Florida Maquis Patreon channel, one single U.S. dollar per month. That's it. Even less than that. You can get it for less than a dollar a month if you sign up for an entire year at one time. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, hundreds and hundreds of videos going back, five or six years covering virtually every angle of the nuts and bolts of psychological operations. Now, I'm not going to waste a lot of your time. Two and a half minutes in, let's get to it. Most of you know that this channel is not a giant fan of this very recent trans influence into the military where there are people who want and need for everybody to know that there are feelings inside of them that they can't deal with. Therefore, they decide to make a big giant show of what's going on with them psychologically by dressing in the opposite sex as uniforms. That's basically all it is. It's an attention-seeking mechanism that never has any end to it. Now, it's something that began a long time ago in the military when they started to uh, begin to incorporate, quote-unquote, the gay lifestyle into service. Not a fan of that, but... This is an article from all the way back in 2010. U.S. Senate blocks repeal of gay military law. Um, U.S. Senate Republicans way back then uh, tried to block a White House-backed bid under Obama to repeal the ban on gays serving openly in the U.S. military. Now, as we know, things have changed a great deal since 2010. But what is the new story? Who is this group of soldiers? This is something that... I know this is going to sound strange coming from this channel. This is wildly, unbelievably hypocritical and unfair of the United States military to allow to continue to go on. There are soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, guardsmen that prior to, prior to the lifting of the ban on gay service in the military, who were summarily discharged and given horrible, quote unquote, what they call bad paper discharges. And since that time, even after the repeal, have had to pay an enormous price in their lives for having taken all sorts of um, accommodation to leave the military trying to make the paper not look so bad. Let's see if I can explain this, what's happened. This goes all the way back to the 80s. This is a, a young lady named Mona McGuire. 
Let's just go ahead and read the article. In the darkness of early morning, Mona McGuire startled awake. A fist beat on the barracks door. Her heart accelerated into a full gallop, and then the yelling began. Detectives from the Army's Criminal Investigation Division had burst into her room. They stripped her bedding, handcuffed her, along with three other female soldiers, and drove them to headquarters for fingerprinting, a mugshot, and hours of questioning. It was May 1988, and McGuire's interrogators... <clears throat> interrogators knew everything her romantic partner where she hung out even her lady cycle eventually mcguire admitted that yes she had been intimate with a woman it not only ended her army career at the age of 20 it remains on her record to this day the military branded mcguire with a biblically archaic very accurately described here crime forcing her to plead guilty to charges of sodomy and an indecent act to avoid a court-martial and possibly prison. Now, pay attention there. She pled guilty to that to avoid the worst thing, the court-martial in prison. Quote, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, said McGuire, who now lives in suburban Milwaukee for 35 years. For 35 years, only her closest friends knew why she left the service. Yet even today, in the, in the eyes of the Department of Veterans Affairs, an agency that's flown pride flags in front of its hospitals, she's considered an outcast, ineligible for benefits like health care. See, that's because she took the deal. If they had tried to charge her and put her in prison, they'd be in a world of hurt right now. It's almost an unthinkable relic of a discriminatory era that the military is still struggling to repair, advocates say. McGuire is among his is among as many as 100,000 veterans forced out of the military because of their sexual orientation from the 1950s through the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy in 2011. Now, let me stop right here. See, she wasn't at that time asking the military to accept her homosexual lifestyle openly and make accommodation for it. She had kept it to herself. It was her private business. And she had done everything that was asked of her by the military. And they had to employ interrogators and investigators to even find out that she was in a romantic relationship with a woman. You see, she was an MP. But it gets even worse. With a much-heralded reform this month, while, pardon me, while a much-heralded reform this month could ease restrictions for thousands of veterans denied VA benefits in the past, it won't help McGuire and an unknown number of LGBTQ veterans still stigmatized with criminal convictions for being gay. Quote, I feel like some people had the perspective that once Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed, everything would be fine, says Dana Montalto, an attorney with the Veterans Legal Clinic at Harvard Law School. But the repeal didn't do anything to remedy the harm. Quote, baby steps, steps for vets with quote-unquote bad paper. Until 1993, the military prohibited gay and lesbian people from serving, and it went to great lengths to persecute and prosecute those who tried. Don't ask, don't tell, introduced under the Clinton administration, was supposed to be a gentler approach, allowing LGBTQ people to serve as long as their sexual orientation remained hidden. Despite that promise, thousands of officers and enlisted service members were discharged, even if they lived an entirely closeted life. Sometimes they were outed or unfairly hit with numerous allegations of misconduct. In 2010, President Obama signed the repeal of the policy, erasing, going forward, not grandfathered, sexual orientation as a barrier to military service. Since the repeal, the Defense and Veterans Affairs Departments have taken steps to rectify the military's discriminatory past, but those efforts don't automatically erase less than honorable discharges stemming from sexual orientation. Next week, VA will begin considering appeals from veterans with quote-unquote bad paper, another term for less than honorable discharges who can show compelling circumstances such as harassment, military trauma, dis discrimination, mental health struggles that may have led to their forced exit. Now that's another place I want to stop, mental health struggles. 
Do you know how many veterans who didn't actually say, this is why I'm ending my life, have, for this reason, ended their life? Because if you took the deal, like they are saying, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a discharge. It's going to be other than honorable, which is going to disqualify you for all sorts of benefits. We're also going to say that, well... We're not going to use the term gay. We're not going to say a homosexual anywhere in the paperwork. We're just going to give you like inability to adapt. We're going to say, uh, you know, conduct, uh, unbecoming or some kind of um, very ambiguous wording so that that term didn't end up in their permanent record. Well, now, because it's not in their permanent record, they have no recourse because the real reason for their discharge is not in their permanent record. They have no recourse. And they won't have any way to say, because they'll say, well, it doesn't say specifically this is why you were discharged, so therefore, it's absolutely horrible. Fort McGuire, the shift, the shift doesn't help any help because anyone who was court-martialed or accepted a discharge in lieu of a general court-martial, which could have led to prison, doesn't qualify. That could shut out untold thousands of veterans who still carry the scar of discharges over their sexual orientation. How many veterans fall into that category is unclear. It's uh, service members prosecuted for sodomy, conduct unbecoming, a federal civil rights lawsuit filed. You see, let me get right down to the, the nuts and bolts of what I'm trying to say here. This person and a great many others who had this proclivity on the side didn't, in their military career, attempt to, in fact, they went to great pains to hide it from the military, did not get um, treated fairly in this particular case. They tried, to the very best of their ability, to make every appearance as if they were straight, And while they were in uniform, they did not um, let their lifestyle interfere or insist that anybody else accept anything. You see, that was the thing about the military. When you joined the military, you became part of a different group of people. You were then, in my particular case in the Army, I was a soldier. And I didn't expect anybody to treat me any special way because... I was a Hoosier from Indiana or I was a a star on the football team back in high school or anything like that or anything about me specifically, just like these people did, just like these people did. You see, that's my difference here between those people who were gay back then and hiding and doing the very best they could to hide their individuality so that they could be good servicemen. And these people, these people are doing everything they can to put their issues and who they are individually out there in your face and demanding you accept it and demanding you accept their difference and their uniqueness, which is antithetical to everything a military unit stands for. I'm different. I'm special. You need to treat me this way because I'm this, that, and the other. I have new pronouns. You need to say this, that, and no, no. That is not service. That is not the same thing as just having a specific desire to blow off a little steam with a somewhat unorthodox partner, maybe not a a generalized choice. And believe me, back then, when you left the service under these kind of circumstances, it was basically the end of your life what they were doing is they were ending your, in fact, you even got a piece of paper. How many of you guys out there in the military remember it? That said, if you get a discharge, anything other than an honorable discharge, you may encounter severe discrimination in civilian life when people find out about this. 
This person was actually an E5. I'm actually looking at the little cutout here of the DD214. This person had been through PLDC, uh, Professional Leadership Development Course, which authorizes you for promotion out of the enlisted ranks, E4, to E5 sergeant. And it says right here, narrative reason for the separation for the good of the service in lieu of court-martial. So even in that circumstance, even in that circumstance being treated so unbelievably unfairly, the soldier still did, quote-unquote, what was for the good of the service instead of herself, which should have told them all sorts of things about uh, what was uh, wrong with their decision. See if I can uh, figure out where we were here. All right, here we go. Federal civil rights lawsuit, uh, discharge veterans, at least 35,800 veterans were thrown out of the military since 1980 because of real or perceived homosexuality, con conduct, perversion, or any other related reason. In the wake of the lawsuit, the Pentagon announced it would examine the records of veterans discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell and potentially help pursue upgrades, but no timeline has been given. Quote, when I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. That's a hell of a quote. Wow. That is one hell of a quote. Worried, quote, someone would tell us there's nothing equal about the treatment and punishment LGBTQ service members endured over the years, said Montalto, who has represented them for more than a decade. Commanding officers could decide to quietly, quietly push out a gay soldier with an honorable discharge or, like in the case of McGuire, make an aggressive show of it. McGuire, who grew up in a small town of Mineola, um, enlisted in the army to feel close to her father, died of lung cancer. He was an MP. She wanted to be one like him. Um, quote, I didn't know I was gay at that point. We started hanging out, lived in fear, um, dragged from their barracks on that morning in May 88. Layman McGuire and two other soldiers were interrogated separately. At first, they refused to answer deeply personal questions. Threatened with a court martial and imprisonment, they confessed. See, this is what the military was back then. I regret to inform you. So yeah, no, no VA benefits, no, uh, no VA home loans, no care, nothing like this. And now here we are. Once the damage is done, thirty-five years later, they're still not owning up to what they did. So that's who they're hiding. And believe me, if there were any justice in the world, every, every one of these people that came to the military and said, hey, I was forced out. I took a deal. I served honorably. The only thing, the only thing they have on me, the only thing they have on me and the reason they made me leave was something that I did off duty. Let me say this again. It was something that I did off duty in my personal time that wasn't a crime. It wasn't a felony. It wasn't a misdemeanor. And nobody was harmed. And the military ruined my life. I served to the very best of my ability. And nobody, they had to hire investigators and interrogators to even find out about it. And now what they're allowing in the military? Now what they're allowing in the They have gang members in the military now. Believe it or not, they have allowed, because they are so shorthanded, they are now allowing and have put through Marine Corps training and Army training because they've seen the gang tags over in Iraq and Afghanistan. They have gang members in the military but some girl, some girl who just had a thing for another girl who kept it quiet to the extent that the military had to hire investigators to find out about it for, thir for half a freaking century almost has had her life ruined. 
as has had so many others, and there, there's not going to be justice for a lot of them because they took the deal so that it didn't end up on their permanent record. I wonder how many. I do. I wonder how many ended up taking their lives because, believe me, in this particular case, it's almost better that you hadn't served. In some cases, I, you know, looking back, some of them would have been better off saying instead of that year or half or two years I was in the military, that I was in, in jail. They would have been treated more fairly in the civilian sector. If they had, you know, I goofed up, I made a mistake, I, I did two years in jail. People will forgive that. But if you say, oh, I went to the military and, you know, I you know, had a, a fling with somebody I shouldn't have had a fling with, and they investigated and found out, and I got this discharge, this bad paper, this bad DD-214. It's amazing. It's amazing how people see things so differently. But that's one, you know, battlefield of the mind. Because there's, there's a difference, and, you know, it's a tough thing because... You know, they love to lump all of it together. The LGBTQIAA. It isn't all the same thing. It is not all the same thing. These people, these people are trying to make a show and a spectacle of themselves. And are trying to make you involved with all of their mental problems and all of their uh, strangeness and weirdness and oddities and that's why you've got to go through all these machinations and jump through all these hoops and use their pronouns and and talk to them in a certain way that doesn't offend them you see that's entirely different that is entirely different than what this young woman went through it's absolutely uh nauseating hypocritical and uh you know we're supposed to live in this land of liberty right this land of freedom you know, they don't write about it in the history books, but, you know, our founding fathers are a bunch of guys that ran around with makeup wearing wigs. Just saying. Just saying. You can take from that what you want. But anyway, I will leave it there. God bless. Love to have you over Patreon. Make a huge difference in my life. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for those soldiers. Sailors, airmen, marines, and guardmen. It's just horrible. Um, like, share, subscribe. Lift each other up. God bless. See you guys next time.